Hey, we back. I'm here on Discord. I'm on Karuta today, or at least I'm talking about Karuta anyway. It's a weird thing to say, actually, that I'm on a bot. I'm on all the bots today, actually, as it would happen. Anyway, I'm not going to ramble about nothing. We do that often enough anyway. We're talking about clans. Clans is a pretty complicated topic in Karuta. There is a lot to it. Um, and I've made a video on them before if you're interested in how clans work in general, how to set one up, how to join one, whatever. Um, check out that video. I will link it in the description if I'm smart and I remember. Um, if not, just tell me that I forgot. Who knows? But anyway, yeah, clans, clans sure are a thing. Um, now, in that video, I promised I would make a second part that explained more strategy-wise things, like what what's actually, what's up with clans, huh? How do you, how do you do good in clans? Plans. Um, and basically I didn't because it turns out it's really complicated and I don't just mean that in the sense that it is hard to do uh, some big brain strategy um, but like it's like the secret mafia clans is um, it's all rigged uh, they're cabals um, and that's what makes it complicated because you never really know what's going on now, I received a comment recently from uh, someone reminding me to make the second part on the clans video, um, and he said to me that he is a uh, shogun of a clan now, and he learned about clans particularly from speaking to a lot of shoguns. And firstly, I'm going to recommend that you do that. Um, if you really want to know about clans, it is an excellent point. There are uh, clan, clan shoguns are not hard to find, because pretty much by definition they're always going to be active in a lot of big servers. That's how they grow their clans, that's how they they engage with each other and what with it all being like rigged from the inside and whatever and they are they are very much a community the shoguns of all the big clans all know each other very well um, and yeah if you want to get involved i would highly recommend going and talking to them i'm sure you can find some um, in the official karuda server uh karuda hub or you know any other big server like whatever so yeah i would recommend that um but past that there are some things that you can do uh, so, where should we start? Um, let's start with getting members for your clan. Um, getting members is, is probably the most important thing for your clan. As you can see, I'm awful at it. The clan's actually shrunk since the last video. I think we had like 10 members last time, and now we're down to 5. Yeah, whatever. Um, my clan is not particularly active. We don't do a whole lot. We have taken nodes before. At least one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we don't really bother, because in my opinion, the whole clans thing is just kind of like, eh. It's not hugely profitable. Um, I can tell you now that when I did take the node last time, I got, hmm, I don't know, 10,000 bits, something like that. Which is, all things considered, not not that major. 10,000 bits if you want to buy it from someone on the uh, on, on the, the trade hub or something like that, it's probably worth like five tickets, maybe. Like, it's certainly worth having, you know? I'm, I'm down to get myself a, a 10,000 bits. Uh, but notice that this is with like a 60% tax share for my clan. And I got 10,000 bits. Uh, presumably, your share is not that high if you are in a clan, um, even if you are the Shogun, uh, because there's going to be a lot of people in it, assuming that you're in a big clan that takes notes. Um, and so getting even 10,000 bits is going to be pretty difficult. Um, and yeah, you'll probably get it more often. Yeah, it's worth a couple of tickets, but I just personally cannot be bothered. Um, so that's why I don't put too much effort into it. If you do want to put a lot of effort into it, you will obviously make uh, more money than I do, uh, but I still don't think it's hugely profitable. Uh, so up to you. But the way to do it is certainly to have more members, because if you have more members, if you have more members, then you can take more power. Um, and then you can take more nodes, right? Taking nodes is everything, basically, of course. Uh, once you take the nodes, uh, you get the tax, um, which is, you know, some bits. I'm not going to go into that. I probably did in the last video. Uh, but yes, you're, you, you're going to want to be doing that. Um, and then you sell the bits, right? Now, that's, that's the idea. Um, the more members you have, the more nodes you can take. You will get a lower tax share of it. But as a shogun for a clan, you get a percentage of the bits uh, from the power that your followers got to you. So if you are high up in a clan, you get more stuff. If you are low down in a clan, you get basically nothing. Um, 
So you, this is the incentive to, to be a clan leader and get more cl more members for your clan. Um, and this is why when you go to somewhere like the uh, official server, I believe there is a the whole channel somewhere. Here it is uh, for recruiting for clans. And this is spammed very heavily, as you can see. It's got a slow mode of six hours. It's exactly the same as the uh, the trade ads channel, basically. Um, and yeah, there will be posts on here very frequently. Uh, for people wanting new members to their clan um, because if they get more members then they get more bits that's basically uh, the, 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 the trade up there of course you will uh, get some benefits if you're joining one of the clans advertised here because they all put some kind of benefits as an incentive for joining um, so that's kind of nice um, but yeah it's <laughs> there's another one um, so yeah, there's 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 all of that, and, and you are going to be wanting more members. Would I say, however, that this is a good way of doing it? No, I really wouldn't, um, because uh, people that are looking to join a clan are probably not going to come here and join one of these anyway, and even if they do, the chances that they join yours is pretty slim. Uh, so... I, I don't think if you are looking for members, you are going to get many members by posting stuff here. So what do you do? Well, I'll tell you what you do. The best strategy for getting new members is going and finding one of those big clans um, and joining them, actually. I'll, I'll explain. I'll explain. You try and get a high up position in one of their clans. And then uh, what you do is you, you make an agreement with the shogun of the clan uh, that when new members join the clan, they can join under you. Right, because here's the thing: when you change clan or leave your clan, any person following you comes with you. Right. So let's suppose I join this clan here. I don't know how big it is, but let, let's assume it's a really big clan. Right. Let's say, ah, oh, it's 200 members in this clan, and I message this guy Gangnam style. And I say, hey, look, um, I'll join your clan. Can I get a reasonably high position? People can join under me, whatever. And assume I'm, I join and I be part of the community. I, I get to know the people there. They, they're going to be like, oh yeah, sure. This is this is a fine. This is a thing that can happen uh, and if not i go find a different clan that will agree to this right and then what happens is every time someone else dms this guy it's like hey yeah can i join the clan uh, they say yes sure you can join under steve and they go and follow me and they're part of the clan and this is a win-win situation uh, because then i can go out and advertise this clan and the clan of gangnam style um to all of my friends and so it gets a bunch of new members and this guy's very happy because his clan's getting more members but i'm also happy because i am getting more members as well right then when i have a substantial number of members following under me specifically if i want i can leave this guy's clan i can go up to a bigger clan something like that right and then i can say to the new clan hey look i've already got like 50 members under me I'll join you clan if you put me really high up in the rankings, right? See, and you've upgraded, right? Now you're really high up in the rankings in a bigger clan, a bigger clan, and you keep going, right? And eventually, you've got your own clan, with like a few hundred members, you know, and you're the Shogun, huge stonks. Um, now you will find um, that actually, uh, like getting like thousands of members in a clan is just not a thing that happens. Um, I'm pretty sure there is a, a limit of not how many members you can have, but I think how much power that a clan can have. It, it, it really tails off. Once you've got a lot of power, getting more power is, is hard. Um, and what you'll find is you, there aren't actually clans of more than a couple hundred members. Um, but of course, people will want to work together in groups of more than a couple hundred members, especially when it is profitable to do so. So then what you find is you get like clan hierarchies where you have one big clan that represents a bunch of other smaller clans that all all share each other's stuff right so you could find uh, one person goes under the big leader and then they swap out for a different person right and you'll have like 10 clans all working together and they're all one big clan because having one clan with a few thousand members wouldn't be profitable but having five clans with a few hundred members each is and what this also means is very easy to rig the nodes which is what we can move on to next perhaps um but yeah so if you if you get into one of those big clans that's basically where you start winning right um 
you you if if you're if you're high up in them you've got a few hundred followers yourself um and then you're in one of the big clans and you can start doing the the weird and wacky stuff um but yes this weird and wacky stuff certainly does exist um because what you could find if you've if you are managing you know like five clans under you um you can have them all slot, swap the nodes right and this is where node managers come in what node managers do um, is they are these big boss chief people um, who, you know, manage the nodes. And they're basically, uh, they swap the nodes between clans that they control or clans that they're friendly with or whatever. Um, and you'll have certain huge groups that always have a node. Um, and if you want to take the node from them, uh, you're going to run into a bad time. Because uh, the way that taking nodes works, I believe I explained this in the last video, so I won't go into it too much. Uh, but you can attack a node and you can defend a node. Uh, defending a node is actually not hard as long as you have a reasonable amount of power and for these big clans they have a reasonable amount of power so defending a node is pretty trivial uh, they are going to defend a node and they're going to stop you from taking it unless you have made an agreement with them to take it uh, so what happens is you go to them and you say oh yes i'm going to uh, take this node please uh, how much do you want paying right and and, th and that's what it is you pay them and they'll be like yes you can take the node at this time on this date um, and this is called queuing. So this is what you do now. And then the node managers start making money because while getting, you know, 10,000 bits or something is not huge, when people start paying you for it, then it starts being profitable. You'll get so many people paying you and all of your subclans or whatever um, in order to queue, and then you start making a lot of money. Um, of course, you're getting the bits as well sometimes when you do have the node, and, and this is this is where we, we get into the rigging as well. You'll also get, if we move on to the second page, not going to let me, but let's, let's try here, uh, you'll find that there are a lot of bits of very high tax. Uh, that, there are some bits that are rarer than others. Now, to be fair, a lot of this has changed up very recently, in the last month or so, um, the bits that are rare, quote-unquote rare, and, and the ones that are not have changed. So we've got like Essence, um, Quartz is down here. Uh, both of these uh, used to be rare bits and now keep appearing at 10% tax. We had Stone for a while, has been at 10% tax quite a lot of the time. Um, ice has been down there a fair bit recently. Um, and yeah, these are bits that are normally set to very high tax and recently have been not. Now you can sell the rare bits for a little bit more than the uh, the common bits, uh, just because they are a bit rare. And they are rare because they are often at very high tax values. It makes it a bit, a bit more difficult to get them. So you can sell them a little bit more. Now, they're not that much more valuable, because actually it turns out they are low tax sometimes, and then people get them. Um, so buying them is, is not that hard. Uh, but they are worth a little bit more, um, and that is because the people that manage these nodes have tried their best to keep them at a high tax very consistently, which increases the value of their bits. Um, so yeah, that is also a thing. Um, if you are going to attack a node yourself without um, agreement from one of these people. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, I would recommend attacking one of these uh, rarer bit nodes um, because you, your, the bits that you get will be slightly more valuable than otherwise. Um, so that is certainly a thing. Also, if you do uh, attack a node and take it, um, you're probably going to want to move the tax down so people actually start taking from there. Um, because as you can see, the nodes down here get much more workers than the nodes up here. And uh, the, the tax is is, you know, equivalently uh, much less uh so yeah you're you're gonna want one of the uh one, one of the nodes that that's one of the cheaper ones that's the point um so for example if i took a node right now um i would probably set it to i don't know say five percent tax uh because i would be getting uh like 10 times the amount of people working there um and still uh more bits overall plus everyone's happy if it's less tax so yeah there you go Anyway, this moves us on nicely to the next thing that I was going to talk about, which is sniping nodes. Basically, the act of taking a node without asking for it. Um, now, this used to be just how 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 nodes worked in general. Um, way back when, when the nodes were new and such, people hadn't figured out that they could rig everything from cabals. Um, then we had simply, uh, every time you were going to take a node, you would DM the person beforehand and say, hey, look, can I take it? And you would still pay them, um, but it would just be you DM the person that currently has the node, and they'll, they'll always say a yes, or this other person has already asked for it, or something like that, right? Um, and it would just kind of chain. Um, and this was the first way that it worked. Um, but now, 
since that isn't how it works, uh, the only alternative to taking nodes really um, is sniping them, uh, which is where you, you try and take the node before the next person on the queue that presumably exists um, is going to get it. Um, and there's a couple of ways to do this. You can either just just attack the node, um, in which case you, it's probably not going to work. Uh, you attack the node with way too much power. That's the main thing that you've got to do. Uh, so we can do the maths on a node. So if I if I do uh, info on say uh, what's a good example, perhaps like oil right now, uh, you can see that it has um, a fair bit less power than it might do at the start. It starts with twenty five thousand. It's gone down a bit. Power decays this much. This, as I said in the last video, is equal to uh, the number of members of a clan. So you can tell the, the, the Shogun here has 239 fellows. Um, and attacks against the node are 86% weaker due to grace period. Uh, now, I've already explained all this maths in the last video, so won't go over it now, but we can figure out how much power we need uh, to attack with in order to exactly defeat the node, right? Um, and in theory, you do that and you get it and you're happy. But you actually don't, uh, because what you can do instead, let's suppose you calculate that and it, it equals 80,000 power. I don't know, just a random example, that's probably not correct, but let's just suppose 80,000 power. You could attack with 80,000 power, but if you saved up 160,000 power and then attacked with that instead, then instead of taking five minutes to uh, kill the node, it will only take two and a half. Every time you do an attack, it does the power over five minutes, so that's how it works. Um, but yeah, so if you had double the power, you could attack uh, with double the power and take two and a half minutes instead of five. If you get that that number low enough, then might not have time to respond. Because you have to imagine that the Shogun is not going to be on Discord 24-7. If you give them five minutes to respond, they might defend quite easily. But if you give them two and a half minutes to respond, maybe not. Maybe you can give them two minutes, one and a half minutes. Now, like I said, there's kind of a limit on the number of power that you can get. And to be fair, getting 160,000 is going to be really difficult. Even for a big clan, it's going to take a little bit of time uh, because it does really tail off at the, at the top end there. Um, but you can totally do it in, a, in just a couple of minutes. Um, and give them not too long to respond and to defend for it. So that's that's the first thing you can do. Uh, the next thing you can do is try and attack at the same time as someone else, either right before someone else attacks or right after someone else attacks. Um, if you do it right before someone else attacks and then someone else attacks, um, then your power will finish after five minutes and their power will also finish after five minutes. Uh, but because you attacked first, your power finishes first, you're going to have dealt the majority of the damage and then you get the node, um, because that's how that works. Um, and the person that owns the node might not want to defend because they were intending to give the node away to some other person. So then you end up getting the node. Uh, you can also do it after someone else attacks. So if someone else attacks and does like the exact right amount of power, and then you attack with the increased amount, so say you, with the 160,000, um, you still get it in double the speed, right? So yours will finish in two and a half minutes, theirs will finish in five minutes, and so again you end up with the majority of the power uh, that you've defeated and therefore you get the node. The advantage of doing it at the same time as someone else is firstly, the person that owns the node was planning on giving away the node anyway, so they might not notice it, might not expect it. Um, I guess expect is kind of the wrong word, but the, 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 they, they will expect the node to be going away and they're like, oh, the node got attacked. Yeah, this is fine. Um, but also, um, you get the extra power of the, the other clan helping you out in the attack, right? So instead of just having yourself to defeat this 15,500 power, you now have another clan helping you out. Inten intentionally, probably not, um, but they are helping you out all the same to get the power. So uh, the attack happens faster. It's a little harder to defend against as well, although that doesn't make much difference. Um, so yeah, that is also a thing. Now, of course, these big groups, the, 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 the node managers and such, are not too appreciative of snipers, but at the end of the day, the snipers are always going to exist. They're always going to be trying and taking nodes, um, and they're, they're going to manage plenty of often um, because there's, there's just too many uh, smaller clans and they, they can't be bothered to pay money to, to queue, and then they, they're going to be sniping. Uh, what you also then get is actually 
big clans sniping because if the if the small clans can snipe, why can't the big clans snipe? Um, the big clans that snipe are never going to be as big as the big clans that don't. Um, you'll you'll you you might get a, a clan of like two hundred people sniping, but I don't think you're ever going to get a group of five clans of two hundred people each all working together to snipe. That might be a bit much. Um, although to be fair. I can't comment particularly on it. Um, you'll have to correct me on that. Um, but at any rate, yeah, you can get some big clans that also then snipe. Uh, and what you'll find as well is you get like clan wars basically going on. Um, I know that last time I took a node, I got a lot of DMs from people asking me like, who told you to attack that node? Uh, because what they are assuming is that there was some some other clan that they don't like uh, is trying to, to get their node from them and they're using this little clan here that I had in order to do it. And they might be uh, paying me something to say go and attack that node to annoy the big clan that we are fighting in the clan war with. It's like, it's like a gang, you know? They, they've paid the little guy to go and poke their, their gang war people uh, or something like that. Uh, now, in my case, this is not what happened at all. I just, you know, attacked the node and then that was that. Um, but yes, I, there was a lot of people that either were very happy or very unhappy that I had taken that node, depending on which side of the war you were on, you know. Um, I didn't really get involved in any of it because I couldn't be bothered. Um, but the point is that all of that exists. Uh, and that's the thing that happens. Um, and if you get big up on the clans and you get super active in the communities, this is the kind of thing that you will probably come across. Um, and whether you're interested in, in that or not is completely up to you. Um, it can be hugely profitable. Well, reasonably profitable. As profitable as bits can be, it's not the most insane thing ever. I think there are much better ways of making money on Karuta, uh, such as dies or frames or something like that. Just cards, who knows? Um, but anyway, uh, it is certainly a way of making money. And if you are interested in things like that, then hey, could be a bit fun. Who knows? Uh, but anyway, um, I think I've said everything that I kind of planned on saying in this video. Hopefully it was reasonably interesting. Um, I'm sure I got plenty of things wrong, so if there are any experts that want to correct me on stuff, you're welcome to do so. Um, uh, because uh, this is not something that I'm hugely involved with. I'm, I'm also aware this is very much a talking video. My screen has just kind of been sitting here, uh, not been using much examples, because this isn't really something that you can uh, have an example of without me going through a hundred different servers and showing you the clans themselves. Um, and I'm sorry, but I'm at the Discord server limit, so I can't, I can't do that. Um, so yeah, this has just been a bit of a talking video. I don't know if it's been that interesting to you guys. Um, hopefully I conveyed some kind of information that was interesting, helpful, something like that. Um, I do think it's important to have a video on something like this, to be fair, so I'm glad that I've made it. Um, but at the same time, I don't know how helpful it really is. Uh, so I will refer back to the suggestion I made at the start of the video, which is that if you really want to get involved with this kind of thing, I would go and find some shoguns, some big shoguns, the shoguns of the big clans. Uh, talk to them, get involved in their communities, um, and it'll definitely be uh, easy to figure out from the inside, shall we say. Um, but anyway, I will, uh, I will be ending this video here. Bye!